I think it's about time. So I've been thinking of retiring my old 2014 MacBook Air and getting me a new N1 Mac. Problem is, which one should I buy as a long-term investment? Now, of course, if we have the money, we would definitely buy the latest in Macs, such as the brand new Mac Studio that has just been released just recently. But let's face it, that is just overkill for us normal folk. So I wanna see which one is actually the best as a long-term investment. Okay, so I'll be looking at the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 Max MacBook Pro, and also dive a little bit more on the new Mac Studio. Okay, so let me put this out there. The prices of these machines are still pretty much very expensive, given that they're actually Apple products. But which one will be more useful for a starting video editor? So let's start with the M1 MacBook Air. Okay, so if you're going for a budget and you want something that is very useful for your video editing, you might want to go with the M1 MacBook Air. Now, I'd rather think that it's actually better to increase the RAM to 16 gigabytes and have that limited 512 gigabyte memory as we already have an external SSD to actually go with the memory itself. Now, this setup would actually cost you around 2,149 Australian dollars brand new. So with the M1 MacBook Air, you're getting a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and also two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports. So you're gonna have to factor in the use of dongles as well when using this laptop. As for battery consumption, Apple has a very good track record with regards to the battery life of their devices. And apparently these are very evident on their M1 Mac lineups. And lastly, the screen. So we have a 13 inch screen, which to me is actually pretty much all right with video editing. I have enough real estate that I can use when editing my videos on this laptop screen. Now, let's go with the M1 MacBook Pros. Okay, so there are two variants of M1 MacBook Pros. You have the Pro lineup and you have the Max lineup. Okay, so I'd like to have a very good investment on the long run, as I've said earlier. And I believe that the M1 Max actually has my name on it. Having the base 10 core CPU with a 24 core GPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM, I would very well use this Mac for a longer time because I believe this would be able to keep up with the updates of Apple and other apps as well, along with a one terabyte default storage, which is actually pretty much okay as well. Now this also comes with three Thunderbolt 4 ports, along with an SD card, an HDMI port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So by default, this laptop has one terabyte worth of storage, which is actually not that bad. Now with regards to the notch, I really don't mind this since I'm already using an iPhone with a notch. So it's pretty much for me, not that different. So unfortunately though, this will actually push our budget up around 4,649 Australian dollars, brand new comparing with the MacBook Air. But in my opinion, 32 gigabytes of RAM actually gives me more reassurance that the longevity of this product will actually go throughout the ages. And lastly, we go straight to the tippy top. Now, if you have the budget and you're just making normal vlogs, should you actually buy the new Mac Studio? Well, in my opinion, I'd only buy this if I'm doing a ton of VFX, complicated video productions, or even run programs that will require a lot of computational power. And even with the M1 Max, I think that's even enough for most task-taking computing programs. But if I do have the money, then why not? Why not buy the M1 Max Studio? With its four Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back, a 10 gigabyte ethernet port, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, adding to it two more USB-C ports on the front, and also an SD card slot. Now, that's actually pretty much well spent with, well, if you're paying for the IOs, that is. Now, comparing this with the other two devices, I would say that this is actually not that portable as not only will you be bringing this on your bag, but you're also going to factor in the monitor as well. So if I were to buy this machine, I would go with an M1 Ultra with a 20 core CPU 
a 48 core GPU with 64 gigabytes worth of RAM and a one terabyte worth of storage, which in my opinion is already overkill. But we're talking about if I have tremendous amounts of budget here. Okay guys? Now I think that's actually enough, but being said, this would actually cost you at around $6,099 Australian. Now, you haven't factored in the display yet, which is actually $2,499 Australian dollars as well, adding up to $8,598, which is a lot of money to cash out. Okay, so in my conclusion, if I were to buy and choose within these M1 Macs, which one would I actually choose? Well, I think it's safe to say that I'd rather invest in a computer that can actually give me the best processing power. That's also portable and that would also last longer than my expectations. Now, in my opinion, that would be the M1 Max MacBook Pro with its 32 gigabyte of RAM and built-in ports as well ready that won't require me to use dongles. I'll be pretty much set on using this device. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Tell me what you think. Would you rather go with a budgeted M1 MacBook Air, an M1 MacBook Pro, or would you actually have enough money to purchase a Mac Studio? Anyways, leave your comments down in the comments down below. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and also hit that bell icon for any more future notifications. Until then, I'll see you all on the next video.